people are always asking me about the sous vide steaks, so I'm going to show you the original way I did it when I did not have a recirculator and I wanted to experiment and also how it's done with a recirculator. First of all we have two New York strips here. First of all we have to season them. So depending on how thick the steaks are you want to put quite a bit of salt actually, a lot more than you would think. Because it's going to penetrate into the meat. A bit of salt. A bit of pepper. If you like, you can put garlic powder on there too. That works really well with it. Always season both sides. Okay, now I'm going to vacuum seal it for the sous vide recirculator. First thing you're going to do, put that in there, clamp it down, do a seal on it. Now I always seal both ends twice just in case you don't get a good seal. That helps protect it, keep water from leaking in. There's one. There's two. Okay. Now to help keep from getting salt and stuff on the inside where you're going to be sealing the other end, it helps if you put the bag, end of the bag inside out, just like this. And you're going to take your steak. Gently just put it inside the bag there. And we'll put the end of the bag back over. And you're going to put this back into this vacuum sealer. Put that down, clamp it, hit the vacuum. Now it's automatically sealing. And we'll put a second seal on it just to make sure. Now, when I first heard about sous vide, I wanted to try it, but I didn't want to spend the money on a recirculator. So what I did is I actually set up a pot of water on the stove with a Bluetooth thermometer so I could monitor the temperature and then used a Ziploc bag to get most of the air out and to suspend it in there. Okay, so that there is our vacuum sealed steak. We'll set that aside. Now next up, regular Ziploc bag. Open it up. Set your steak down inside. What you're going to do is seal it almost all the way. Take yourself a bowl of water. You can use your pot if you want to, but sometimes it gets a little hot. And then if you set it down in there, force it down, this will force a lot of the air out of the Ziploc bag. So then you just go through and make sure you seal it. No, majority of the air is out of there. Once you suspend it in the water, the air will go up to the top so you don't need to worry about air pockets being around the steak itself. Now let's head over to the recirculator and our pot. Okay. On the right here we have our recirculator in the container. It is set for 133 degrees. On the left here we have our pot which right now is set on 9, it's the highest temperature, we're trying to bring it up to 133 degrees. Once it gets up there I'll show you where we're at, we'll be back in a minute.
Right now I got my temperatures almost stabilized. The pot over here is set at 134, 133 actually is what I want to get it at. I found out if I set my stove to 3, it will pretty much maintain a 133 degree temperature. I got my sous vide recirculator here. It is set for 133. So we're going to set the time on that for one hour and a half. So it's set for an hour and a half. I can turn on the Wi-Fi with this so I can monitor it on my phone also. This is set up to a Bluetooth thermometer on this side here. You can see it down here on the bottom. That's going to monitor. Now I'm going to set up the uh, Ziploc bag and suspend it and I'll show you how I do that. So what I do with this is I will take my Ziploc bag. I will put it in there until it's just completely submerged. Then fold that over. And then I use a clothespin to hold it right there. I will also take the thermometer here and set it in there so it can monitor the temperature. We should be pretty good to go with that. I'm going to set that back just a little bit there. It's showing a little bit high, so we'll take it a little bit off the burner here, get a little circulation going. Now with our recirculator, all we're going to do is take our steak here and just set it right down inside there. You can put the lid on it if you like. It's better for long cooks. It helps with evaporation. Short cooks, you don't need to worry about it so much. So we're just going to leave it off. And now we will come back in an hour and a half and we'll see where we're at with our steaks. A little tip you can do is if your temperature does creep up a little bit, you can always take and add just a little bit of cold water in here to bring your temperature back down. That will help you keep it in line until you're done cooking. A little trick you can do if your temperature is creeping up like you see right here, 134, is you can also take the pan and move it just a little bit farther off of the burner so there's less contact with the burner, therefore generating less heat. If it gets too low, then you can slide it back on. You can also control the temperature by adding cold water or warm water to it. Just as long as you don't overfill it, remember to remove water if it gets too full. As you can see, we're about 20 seconds from being at our one and a half hour mark. <clears throat> this pot over here, it has been maintaining a 133 to 134 temperature. Like I said, move it on and off the uh, burner just a little bit to maintain the temperature where you want it. Now remember, one to two degrees can make a big difference as far as the cook with sous vide. So make sure you keep it controlled right there. So I'm going to turn this off right here. I'm going to take and remove these out of here. And let me get our pan right here. I'm going to take this up and just set this right in here. Take this one up and just set this right in here and then I will be back in just a minute. Okay, now it's time to remove the steaks from the bags. A little best to put them on a rack here so they can drain off just a little bit because when you sear them off you want them to be as dry as possible to get that nice caramelization on the meat. Alrighty, there we go. You can save the juice from that, and if you want, you can use it to help flavor a sauce or a gravy for it. But otherwise, right now, <clears throat> we just have our meat right here. Next up, we're going to take and sear it off in a cast iron skillet. Now, what I like to do with a cast iron skillet is I will take and put it on the burner at a low temperature so it heats up much more evenly. And then when it gets really, really hot, just about smoking, then you're going to put some oil in it. I use coconut oil because it has a high flash point. Put coconut oil in it and then when it starts to smoke again, that's where you're, when you're going to sear off your meat. 
Now, before you sear off your meat, you want to go ahead and pat it dry with a paper towel just to get as much moisture off as possible. And I know they look a little anemic and not quite so appetizing right now. But we'll put a little coconut oil in there. And we'll get it nice and seared off. The pan looks like it's about ready to go. Just barely starting to smoke up just a little bit. There we go. So you got that nice smoke in there. We want that nice and hot. You just set this right in here. And then you're going to give it about 30, 30 to 45 seconds on each side. You just want it to sizzle up nice and good. It really doesn't take too long to sear it off. A little bit longer. And I'll flip it over there. So you don't want to cook it too long in the pan because then it starts to cook farther into the meat and it'll ruin your medium rare or medium or whatever your internal temperature is. So you want to cook it as fast as possible so that's why you use a smoke and hot pan. And give us just another second here and we should be good to go. Another thing that works good is if you sear off the uh, this fat cap that's along the outside out here. I'm going to stack those up and we'll do a quick little hold and sear on those. Pretty good right there. Back those up. Give them a swing over like that. Now we'll cook off that fat cap on the end there. Looking pretty good there. We'll set these over here on our board. Turn the stove off and now we'll give them just a second and we'll cut them up. Okay, now with sous vide, since you're cooking it at a predetermined temperature and you're not going above that, you don't need to let it rest in between cooking and cutting. So let's check out and see what we got right here. This one's just a little bit more than a medium rare, but you can see it's all nice and juicy.
There you go, and you see all that nice juice that's in there? Just comes right on out. So that's the basics of cooking sous vide. You could do it, like I said, with a pot and water. Just monitor the temperature on the stove. Or you can do it with the recirculator, which you can buy on Amazon or wherever. Either one works good. This one here came out a little bit more than a, a medium rare, closer to a medium. You want to bump it down to probably 131 to 130 to get more of a medium rare texture. But otherwise, enjoy. Now for those of you that are wondering, this is extremely juicy. As you can see, very, very, very tender. It just pulls apart. Very, very tasty. Holy crap, that's good.